slides. Um, I cannot see anything other than the slides, and so Catherine will be monitoring the chat. Feel free to put the questions in there, and then you know she can throw them in uh, or even respond to them in the chat. Um, and I'm going to ask everybody as we get started to let's just all take a nice deep breath. I know even though we're not literally running from room to room, sometimes when you're dealing with technology, you might as well be running from room to room as you're trying to figure out how to navigate it all. And um, especially when we just have these quick 20 minute sessions, it feels very rushed. So let's all take a nice deep breath in as deep as we can and let it out nice and slow. And here we go. So we're going to be talking today about inbraining or um, multiple brain integration techniques where neurosciences meet ancient wisdom to integrate our head-based knowledge with heartfelt values and deep intuition. And um, something that uh, to think about is how often we use words that actually help us recognize the different parts of our body. We talk about let's put our heads together when we're trying to think of something really smart or follow your heart when you're trying to uh, make a decision around you know, how you feel about something or go with your gut. What's your intuition tell you about this? Well, there's actually science behind that that shows that each parts of those body do constitute a brain. They all three have large numbers of neurons and ganglia and neurons are just um, those nerve cells that transmit nerve impulses. And then the ganglia is what connects the nerve cells together. Uh, they all take in and process information and store memory. Um, and your heart and gut are able to function without your head brain to direct them. And then also the chemical neurotransmitters, those are, that are found in the head brain are also found in the gut and heart brains. And each of your brain has core competencies. So we know that our heart is, is our place where we feel compassion. And you see a list here of the other things that, that come from the heart. Head, that's our cognition, our creativity, our curiosity. And then, um, you know, from our gut, that's that intuition, that, that courage to do something, the willpower, that's actually where we feel our sense of well being and calm or not calm or feeling well, but we feel that in our gut. And each of those brains has, uh, or those neural networks, operate in different modes. So you have your sympathetic mode, which is the fight or flight, and that's what gets you moving um, and deciding how to handle a situation. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is, you know, the feeding, breeding, and rest. That's what brings you back to normal, normalcy after the danger is passed. So all three of these brains have those abilities and it's when they are out of whack is when we're really feeling a lot of stress and anxiety. And so in, in an ideal world in an optimum state is when there's coherence among all three of them. I want to show you, I guess I, oh, I didn't put it here, sorry. Um, and so in your heart, compassion would be your coherent state, but then apathy would be the one extreme and vengefulness would be the other. And so, if you are out of whack, you're not feeling compassion, you're feeling apathy or you're feeling vengefulness, your goal is to bring it back to a place of compassion. Um, connection. You don't want to feel one end of the spectrum of loneliness or the other end of the spectrum as guarded. 
Ideally, you want to be connected. And so a very key part of this exercise is the balanced breathing. Um, you may have heard the term, you know, breathing, diaphragmic breathing. Um, and I put a link in here and this PowerPoint will be available for you to get a hold of later, but you can read this article on diaphragmic breathing. It talks about the benefits of it uh, as well as different ways to practice it. But let's um, practice it here. You want to sit in a comfortable and relaxed position. You want to sit upright with your uh, spine straight, your shoulders relaxed, and your head over your shoulders, not, not forward. So try to get your position good. Feet on the floor, flat against the floor. Uh, eyes can be open or closed, whatever is more comfortable for you. And then you're going to breathe in deeply, gently, and naturally through your nose, and then breathe out through either the nose or the mouth, whichever one is more comfortable. So let's just practice that for a little bit. In slowly, naturally through your nose, and then out through either your nose or mouth. So practice that a little bit so that it's feeling very natural. And now as you're breathing, focus on your diaphragm. That is that muscle that's right be below your lungs. And you will feel that diaphragm lower when you inhale and rise up when you exhale. So a little bit more practice. And if it feels uncomfortable for you, that is that is perfectly normal. It is something that does take practice. And so now we are um, going to actually practice the process of aligning our brains, getting them all to talk to each other and get on the same page, so to speak, get on the same network. Um, sequence is important. And the sequence we go through today is the most uh, common, but that doesn't mean that it necessarily is the best for you. Um, you might find as you practice this at, in other times that there's a different sequence that works better for you. Um, but in every situation, you do want to start with the heart. And so the objective is to get the feelings of your heart, the thoughts and perceptions in your head, and the motivated actions in your gut all to line up. So you're going to begin with the heart and you to link it with values and things that are important to you. Then we're going to move to the head and tap into our creativity and curiosity. And then finally, we'll bring the gut in to uh, find the motivation, figure out the movement and the will to action. So as we practice, you're going to think of an issue or a situation in which you would like to take more action. And as beginners, I would recommend that you pick something nice and, and simple, like what am I going to eat for dinner? Um, you know, this, this can be used, you know, after you have more practice with it, with very difficult decisions, like what do I do with a toxic relationship? A lot of things about um, parenting. Students can use it around uh, schoolwork and friendships. But I would say for a first practice, uh, just, just pick something nice and simple. Go ahead and think, think, go ahead. 
Terry, uh, just to, um, we have less than a minute left. I'm sorry. I thought we had 10 minutes left. Oh, did we start at 210? Yes. yes, I think you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. Great. That's good. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. And so think of your issue and, and then think of core values. What are things that are very, very important to you? Peace, joy, love, honesty, health, compassion, well-being. When, when people think of you, what, what do you hope they're thinking of you? Are you, you know, kind, motivated, honest, healthy? And then let's go back to our balanced breathing. And uh, so two techniques that, that I know of are, um, one is to breathe in for the for six seconds and breathe out for six seconds. Another one is what they call square breathing, where you breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and hold for four seconds before breathing in again. So those are two examples that uh, you want to consider, but it's called balanced breathing because you want to really make sure that your inhale, inhalation and exhalation is balanced. So I'm going to give you about 90 seconds to practice with that and get to a place of real balanced breathing. And while you're doing that, think about your issue and your core value. Breathe deep and evenly in your heart area. Visualize your core value. Is there a symbol, some imagery, maybe a person, a color? What are you seeing in your heart that represents your core value? Don't let the head in to analyze it. Just let it come naturally. Now let that image in your mind get bigger and brighter. Bring it in closer to you. What do you see in here? Give it a color if you can and breathe in that color. Feel that value coming alive in your heart. Now breathe that core value up and into your head area. Imagine your head being filled up in every corner. Think about your issue or your situation and allow your core value to cover it. What are some ways that you're understanding it, perceiving it, thinking about it?
Make sure to keep breathing. Get those thoughts in your head aligned with the core values of your heart. And check back in with your heart. Is what in your, those thoughts in your head, are they aligning with what's in your heart? And now you're going to take those feelings and those thoughts and continue down into your gut area. Imagine carrying out the action that your head and heart agreed upon. What does that look like? Visualize the action that will make those thoughts in your head and those feelings in your heart come to action. Does your gut agree it can carry that out? And now circle back to the heart and ask your heart, does this action sit well with you? Are you on board with this? Does your intended action align with the core values of your heart? Alrighty, so you can see why this is a very difficult thing to do in just 20 minutes. Um, hopefully you can see how having, it does take much more time. Um, but if you go to the website, www.mbraining.com, they actually have MP, you know, they have recordings that, you know, somebody else can walk you through it. Um, they also have tools you can use to help gauge your breathing, um, as well as information about the book. Uh, they have actually different exercises that you can do. And in these last couple of minutes, are there any, any questions or just feedback, any thoughts? You're on mute, Catherine. Are you seeing the chat? Um, so Annie uh, says it makes sense and thanks you. I can see that now. Um, you know, I just want to mention it as a, if we use the example of what am I going to have for dinner, just to make sure that when I, so an example of how this might work out is your core value is is well-being and in good health and then you go to your brain and you're thinking about what you're going to you know 
make for dinner? Does it align with good health? Are you thinking logically like, I really just want to drive through McDonald's. That's all I have the time and energy for. Okay, does that line up with your core value of eating healthy? Is there a way that you can make them line up, you know, by what you order or picking a different choice or whatever? And then you take those thoughts down into your gut and decide, okay, how are we going to make this happen? And then, you know, that final step back up to your heart. Okay, is this is this all lined up here? So, so really... Uh, Really, the heart is kind of the real arbiter or the real um, gives the final approval. It right. starts there and ends there. Right. And, you know, most of us, we use this brain first. We always think of right. this one. Right. So, yeah. Anyways. Well, thank you very much for joining. And let's get back to the raffle. 